What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Jesse's World. I'm Jesse, if you're not aware. Uh, and today is a little bit different of a video. Um, it's starting to get cold out. It's October 15th. It's kind of gloomy and dark outside. It's only 4 o'clock in the afternoon or 4.30 ish. Yeah, about 4.20. Um, <clears throat> and uh, the temperature reminded me of something that I've been meaning to take care of that I wanted to take care of before winter time gets here. And, uh, well, basically, the concrete in my driveway, or in, in my garage, actually, the floor in my garage, you know, let me just show you. The floor in my garage has this big gaping hole right here, a crack, pretty big crack right there, running all along it. Um, and uh, those two spots in particular, and I think maybe this one right here, this little spot right here, uh, those places in the garage were a huge source of cold air getting in the garage last winter. Last winter was my first winter here, and um, there was literal actual snow blowing under the garage door and coming in because if you look at the garage door here oh, uh, the garage door track is right there and so the garage door comes down right along this edge boom right along that edge of the driveway and the garage floor so both of these spots right here there was literally nothing preventing the cold air and the snow because literal snow was blowing through there from coming in and it was uh, making the garage way colder than it has to be. Um, so I made a trip to Lowe's today um, and I got a few things. Uh, I don't know if it's, first of all, all of it is not for this one project. I've actually got two things that I want to try to accomplish if I can today, if not just the garage floor, but uh, this is what I got today. So I got one of the Lowe's all-purpose buckets and a lid. I got a uh, edge trowel, uh, or hand edger, I call it. QLT Marshall hand edger. It's a six by three inch. Um, I bought a diamond blade for my angle grinder turbo rim smooth cutting diamond blade um, for my angle grinder this cost more than most of everything combined this was $40 um, a carbide tip spider tarantula blade for my circular saw because the blade that's on it um, let me just grab it it's right here I got this skill saw as you can see for six dollars clearance at the pawn shop it's a uh, 2.4 horsepower 11 amp skill saw and the saw itself does a great job i have no problems with the saw it does everything that i needed to do um but this blade that's on here is the one that came on it let's see if i can pull this back here it's the one that came on it uh I don't know how many teeth it is or whatever, but let's see if I can turn this around. Okay, here we go. Here's one of the teeth broken off. Two teeth later, broken off, broken off. Uh, that one broken off. So there are many teeth on here that are broken off. And uh, don't get me wrong, it actually still cuts decent for how old the blade is and you know what the saw is but I got a new blade for it um, so I mean this one is carbide tipped fine finish so that should well obviously do a better job uh, I got a little gouging trowel uh, I figured this should be good enough or make it good enough that I can smooth out the concrete and some concrete bonding adhesive um, so I can try to make sure that the repair that I do over here sticks. The other problem is I've got 
these big chunks down here at the bottom that are kind of loose on this side. Uh, so my plan for that is actually, I'm gonna use my air hammer and this chisel tip on the end of it to try to break those up or loosen them up and get those big pieces right there out. Uh, this side over here is actually not too bad. Um, I'm kind of unsure if I want to do anything with this or not. Let's see how loose it is. Uh, it does move. So I don't know, maybe I'll uh, take all of that obvious um, bad repair or, you know, I, I don't know how to categorize it, but it clearly um, is not doing the greatest. These are loose. It didn't stick or bond very well. So yeah, I'm gonna do all that. I got the, uh, the edge trowel so I could try to make a nice clean round edge like this all the way across. Problem with all of this is my concrete experience is very limited. Uh, I have, well basically the only concreting I've ever done is whenever I worked for Dish Network and I was installing um, ground mounted satellite dishes, we would use the, uh, the quick reet in the uh, the quick set bags, the red bags, and uh, basically put the post in the ground, level it, fill it with concrete, like put the quick reet in the ground and then fill it with water and just kind of let it set. And that's, you know, obviously I would have mixed it up and all that stuff, but that's the most I've had as far as concrete experience. So this is all gonna be new for me. Uh, the other thing um, that you probably saw is the 4x4 um, that I have here. It's a nice, uh, let's see if it's on the, uh, one of these sides here. Here we go. Uh, it says Hampton Premium. Uh, I don't know what all of that means, but Cowlitz Stud M. But it's a really good looking board. My mailbox is, uh, let's see. Well, this is the, the bottom of it. It doesn't look too bad, but the bigger problem is down here at the base. Uh, you can literally pull it up out of the ground because it's not concreted in and the base is rotting. And I just don't like the way it looks. It's, uh, uh, you can clearly tell that somebody made it and they didn't try real hard to make it look nice or I don't know maybe it looked nice whenever they did it originally but it's been 15 years and it's been sitting here. So I'm going to kind of duplicate the design that uh, they have there only um, I'm going to uh, sit it back just a little bit further because it, it sticks out in the street pretty good. Um, I think I'm gonna sit it back just a little bit further, but instead of, you see how the, the post kind of stops right here at the back of the mailbox? Well, I'm thinking that I want to do one of those things where the, um, the post comes up the back of the mailbox, but I'm not sure if I'll be able to or not. I'll have to see about the base and how I mount the base and everything. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna make a new mailbox post. So that is my plan for today. Uh, like I said, it's about probably about 4.30 now. Um, and I'm gonna get started on uh, knocking out some of the, uh, the loose concrete in the driveway. And uh, after that, We'll see how everything else goes. Like I said, not a lot of experience with concrete. I did look up a whole lot of videos on YouTube last night. I know YouTube is where everybody goes to find out everything that they want to know how to do. And I've seen a bunch of different people doing it a bunch of different ways. And um, the consensus really is that you need to get the loose stuff out, use a bonding agent, put in some good concrete and smooth it out. Uh, so 
we will see how that goes. Um, I guess I'll just get started. All right, so I'm gonna start with trying to use the air hammer to chisel out some of this stuff that's down in there that is kind of loose. Here's a little tip, if, uh, if you are a, a family or a home that has cats and you um, get these tidy cats, big buckets, they're really good for all kinds of stuff. Storing things, uh, using them as a trash can, um, picking up rocks and putting them somewhere else. It looks like I'm down to the dirt, basically. Um, so hopefully that's okay. Like I said, I am definitely not a concrete expert. Um, but apparently an air hammer works really good for breaking up concrete. Okay, so to get all the small stuff out of the bottom of the cavity, I, uh, I got my, uh, my shop vac. So I'm gonna use it to suck up all the little tiny stuff. So that's done. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm down to, I believe this is the dirt down here now. So I don't, don't want to go too crazy with the, um, the vacuum because I don't want to suck up a bunch of the dirt that's underneath. Um, but that's where I'm at right now with it. Uh, I got it all cleaned out of all of the little stuff. So now I'm going to try to figure out what I'm going to mix some concrete in. Um, actually, no, I'm not. I already did. Remember when I said these uh, tidy cats buckets are good for all kinds of stuff? Well, I mean, it, it holds, oh, 11.9 kilograms or 35 pounds of cat litter. Um, and uh, let's see, the Lowe's bucket that I got, which is what I'm going to store any concrete that I don't use the dry mix in. It doesn't say, it doesn't say, it's a five gallon bucket. So, you know, and here's the, the size difference between the two. There's not a big size difference really. Uh, so, but yeah, the, uh, I'm gonna put the bag of concrete, I'm gonna take that bag, I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna pour it into that bucket dry. And then I'm gonna pour a little bit at a time out of that into that and mix it in there and then I'll pour it on that. Hopefully that's the way that this is gonna work. Um, like I said, never really done this before. I do have my safety glasses on for the chiseling with the air hammer, just to make sure that nothing popped up and hit me in the eye. And it's a good thing I was wearing them because something did pop up and hit me right here. Uh, so, you know, safety first, always. Uh, I'd rather keep my vision. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna uh, to mix in and stuff. I've got this uh, pick that I got in a big kit from Harbor Freight. I think it's gonna work great for tearing that bag open and uh, spilling all that out in there.
there's still pieces of the bag in the bottom of the container. I mean, I guess I'll just get them out as I need them or as I see them. It's not hurting anything for them to be in there. Oh, did not expect that. We'll see. That's a pretty good amount in there. I might have to mix more here in a little bit. <sighs> Gotta go get some water. So I have a third Tidy Cats bucket. I've just been saving these things for you know a project that I might need, and I guess I found it. I gotta figure out what I'm gonna mix this with, because I don't have any kind of big mixing bit or anything like that. So let me figure that out before I start dumping any water in here. So I figured out what I'm going to use to mix this concrete up. I don't need something that's real super long. I'm only going to have that much concrete in the bottom of this bucket. That's maybe, I don't know, here's the, here's the line right here at the bottom of it. Um, so I figured out what I'm going to use. I've got this old um, yard stake uh, that I had for my dog for whenever we were renting a, uh, a house and I had to pound that thing into the ground and put his cable on it. I had him on a, a 40 foot cable, basically gave him, gave him complete access to the backyard, but the backyard did not have a fenced in backyard. So what I'm going to do is I don't need this thing anymore, uh, technically. So I'm going to take the diamond wheel that I already put on there off and uh, put one of my cutoff wheels. I think that's a grinding one and I got some cutoff wheels in the box still. I'm gonna put one of my cutoff wheels on there, clamp this thing right here in my little vise over there because I don't have a workbench yet to put it on and then use the grinder and cut this off right here. And that will give me all of that length, which, like I said, I only need it to go down to that dark line right there. That's the dark line. So that's gonna be like three times the size that I need it. Um, and then I'll just put that in my drill and use it to mix up the concrete. So that's my plan. All right, so I got it all set up and uh, it's about to get loud. One homemade kind of drill bit, I guess, for mixing concrete. We'll see how well this works. Probably gonna suck, probably not gonna do a very good job, but it's better than the nothingness that I have right now. And I did see they have a concrete mixing bit at Lowe's, but I didn't wanna spend the extra $24 to get it. Figured I could just mix it by hand or do something like this. This just seems like it's gonna be perfect. Assuming that fits in my drill chuck. All right, it's all the way open and it looks like it fits. Fits and it bites. All right, that'll work. Oh, let's turn that on to high speed. It was on low speed. All right, it's starting to get dark out now because although I started this around 4.20 this afternoon, um, I ended up having to leave shortly after. So the uh, I just got back about 6 o'clock and it's currently 7 o'clock. So, 
I guess let's uh, start mixing some concrete. Got my homemade drill bit. Concrete, bucket of water. bubbles it's making. off all right so off camera I did a little bit more add a little bit more water and did a little bit more mixing and uh, I think I got it to a pretty good consistency I just realized that I have this spatula that I was getting rid of because it was really cheap and we weren't using it I could probably use it to scrape sides of the bucket seems like a pretty good consistency I think I mean I'm no expert obviously um, but I think that will work I don't know maybe it's a little maybe it's a little wet I don't know I guess we'll find out in a minute like I said it is getting darker out which is why I was trying to do this much earlier in the day all right so I got the tools that I bought to do this got the trowel and the edger like the uh, what's it called the hand edger and I got the concrete bonding adhesive uh, so apparently for the concrete bonding adhesive you're just supposed to pour a little bit on spread it around a little bit with a brush or something So I've got this paintbrush that I don't care about that's kind of gummed up a little bit with paint because I didn't clean it out real good. this stuff works or why it's supposed to make concrete bond better but the consensus seems to be to use it I don't even know if I got the right kind of concrete to do this. It's got to be better than the nothingness that's here right now. And of course I didn't mix enough.
ever so slightly not enough. I think maybe it's still a little bit too wet to use this edge trowel. Okay, so I know it's not going to be the easiest to see. Uh, maybe if I move some of these buckets out of the way, I can get some light to it. That was almost very bad. I almost, almost stepped right on the edge of what I just got done doing. So this is where I'm at right now. Um, I just got done trying to feather it out a little bit more. Um, and then I took a uh, wet paper towel and went around the outside edges of the concrete and tried to clean up some of the um, over spill, over whatever, off of it. I think I'm gonna wait about 20 minutes and come back and see um, if I can't use the edge trowel to clean up that edge right there just a little bit more. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that'll be that. I'm gonna have to leave the garage door up just a hair tonight so that it doesn't sit on it because it is going to go right in that general area. And uh, I guess I'll try to mix up a little more concrete and pour the rest of it in there and get that one full. And by the time I get done with that, I'm sure this will probably be set a little bit. All right, so I got a, another batch of concrete mixed up. I think I did this one slightly thicker than the last one. Um, I've been on the fence about whether or not to chisel this stuff out of here, but it's doing fine for now. I'll leave it. If I need to fix it later, I guess I'll fix it later. Um, but that's not even... You know, as long as I put a little bit over here in this little crack right here, I don't even know if you can see it or not. Yeah, this little crack right here, then it should be okay. But let's go ahead and pour this in here. I probably made way more than I need, but I figured I'd, I'd rather have more than I need than not have enough. Thank you. 
I think I'm going to feather this up to the top edge of where this piece was sitting at and kind of level it all out together. I think that's probably about as good as I'm going to get it. Up here, I think there's rocks, um, big thick rocks up here in this part that's making it uh, not smooth. It's kind of thin in that area. Um, so I don't know, maybe that has something to do with it. Um, maybe it's the wrong kind of concrete to do little thin areas like that. But that is about the best I can get it on how smooth it is, at least right now. Maybe once it dries a little bit, it'll be easier. Uh, so I'm going to come over here. And now that this has been sitting for like 20, 25 minutes, I'm going to try to use the edge trowel on it again. Dry this off. I've been soaking it in the extra water from the bucket that I was dumping into the concrete to try to uh, keep it from getting all covered in concrete and hard and crusty. Well, I think that's probably going to do it for now. I got that edge all nice and cleaned up pretty good, except for right here, which there's concrete sticking out from the original concrete right there on that ledge. So every time I try to go over it, it just pops up and doesn't work. Um, <laughs> Every time I just try to start talking, 
about something, it comes on because it's got a very slow leak. Um, but anyway, this is the other one. Um, again, it's not perfect, but this is my first time attempting anything like this with concrete. Uh, and like I said, maybe I got the wrong stuff. Maybe this is meant, I mean, this is high strength stuff. I just wanted, you know, I'm going to be driving my car in and out of here. I wanted to make sure that if I ran it over, it wasn't going to break anymore. Um, but I, I really, like I said, had to get it fixed because it's, those two points were like big failures for winter time. And um, the, uh, the snow and the wind was blowing in real bad right there. And, well, like I said, it's October 15th. It's not going to be too long before it probably starts snowing again. Um, and I don't want it to get in the garage as much as possible. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call that a wrap on this video. Uh, I will actually, I'm not going to call it a wrap. I think I'm going to go ahead and call it a wrap on this segment of this video. And here in a couple of days, I will record what it looks like. I'll let you guys see how horrible or maybe hopefully how nice it looks after my first attempt. Um, hopefully it blends in with the concrete that's here right now although the looks like somebody did a patch over here that looks like it was a big patch job that somebody did um, at some point and so it doesn't really blend with the rest of the floor um, here in a couple days I'll uh, I'll do the the finishing of this video and show you guys what the uh, after results are and then I'll get it uploaded uh, for now, I guess I'm signing off. I'll see you in a couple days. Okay, guys, so it's about 36 hours later, give or take a few hours. Um, yeah, somewhere around that. Um, and I just wanted to show you it's, uh, well, what the final, roughly the final product will be um, for the concrete that I fixed. <clears throat> so I think maybe it still has some drying that it's got to do to be fully cured. Um, so I'm going to not drive over or anything yet um, just because that's the big one that I fixed and it's, it's, you know, it's solid. It's not going anywhere. Um, like I said, it's not perfect. This is the first time I've ever done this. And then over here is the other one. Again, I think it still has curing that it needs to do to be fully, you know, ready to drive on and everything. Um, but that's basically what it looks like. Uh, and again, this is, you know, solid. And now, close the door. Like I said, the reason I wanted to do this is because the wind was blowing so bad under the door right here because of the big holes. And it was, you know, it was like snow was literally drifting in the door right there and over there. And uh, so hopefully this winter will be a lot better. I won't have to deal with that. Um, I don't know that is is that like I don't know what that is that's really all I wanted to do I just wanted to uh, get you know uh, uh, an after uh, shot of what the concrete looked like I mean like I said it's still a little looks a little I don't know wet underneath maybe um, so I'm gonna leave it a few more days before I drive on it um, and that's it uh, I mean, it, it's doing the job that I intended it to do. It doesn't look super bad, I guess, uh, for it being the first time. And I know I said before that I'm not sure if I even used the right stuff, but I'm pretty sure I didn't. I think the reason why it looks so different from the floor that I'm standing on right now is that instead of using concrete, I should have used cement. Maybe, you know, somebody out there that's got a lot more knowledge with this kind of stuff and knows what they're doing, let me know in the comments 
Is there, like, is the reason why this floor looks so smooth and so different from that over there is because this is cement and that's concrete and there's just that big of a difference? Um, either way, it'll accomplish what I wanted it to accomplish and it's high strength concrete, so I should hopefully not have to worry about it breaking again, at least not for a long time. And uh, that's it guys, I'm gonna call it a wrap on this video. Hopefully you got something out of it, maybe you learned something or um, whatever. And I did wanna mention that the second pour that I did, um, the smaller section, after I got done with it, I did realize that I completely forgot to use that concrete bonding agent that I have. So hopefully it bonds to the concrete and it doesn't come up. I guess if it does, I'll just get out the air hammer, I'll crack it up and get rid of it, and I'll redo it again, um, and I'll use the bonding agent whenever I do. So anyway, guys, have a good night, have a good day, whatever time it is that you're watching this video. I love you guys, thanks for coming back to check out my videos, and again, I just do this because I like doing it, I like sharing what's going on in my life with the world, and hopefully somebody learns something or gets some enjoyment out of it. Uh, aside from that, have a good night. See you next time. Hey guys, what's up? It's Jesse here, and I just wanted to do one little final snippet for the concrete repair video. Um, it's been about two weeks now since I shot the original portion of that video. Uh, I've been working 10 plus hour days, and uh, I have an hour drive to work and from work, so that puts me at 12 plus hours a day. I barely get to do anything but sleep and go to work at this point. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's been two weeks. It's, uh, well, roughly two weeks. Um, so the concrete is definitely dry now. Uh, and this is the final, final, final result of everything. All right, so this is the big one. Look how white that is. I did not expect that dark concrete, it was darker than this is right here, to turn out so white over here. And it's actually fairly smooth. I mean, you know, I'm sure I could have done something different or whatever. I, I think there's that sponge technique where you can wipe a sponge over the top of it, like a damp sponge, and it'll uh, clean it up a little bit. But that's that one. And then here's the other one. Um, the only thing I'm really worried about as far as this one goes is right here. I think that that little section right there is probably going to break off, but it is high strength concrete, so maybe not. Either way, that's the final reveal of the video. Um, it's rainy and nasty out. You can see or not. Um, but, uh, have a good night, everybody. Um, like I said before, I hopefully you enjoy uh, something from the content. Um, like, share, subscribe, do whatever you'd like to do, and I guess I'll just see you guys next time.